Okay, so uh, uh, let's continue our discussion of uh, dynamic programming. So uh, this morning I just went for um, dental cleaning, so I may not be able to to speak uh, very clearly. Uh, there's still some pain from my mouth, uh, and. Uh, so last time we discussed uh, the difference between uh, between uh, divide and conquer and uh, dynamic programming. The major difference is that in divide and conquer, we divide a big, uh, complicated problem into not overlapping sub problems. Whereas in dynamic programming, we divide a big, uh, uh, big problem into uh, overlapping sub problems, and this subtle difference make. Uh, so 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 uh, so lead to the fact that if we solve the, those the, pro, uh, the the dynamic programming problem uh, with a simple solution, like what we discussed before uh, for the route card problem, if we if we just go for a simple solution by enumerating all the possible ways of cutting a route of uh, of a certain length, then we end up with all. Uh, Two to the power of n complexity, and we say we we call this either exponential com uh, complexity or uh, np hard uh, np hard complexity. And it's fun, And and this generally means uh, so it is uh, computationally infeasible. And to show you what does why it is uh, computationally infeasible. Uh, here we, we, we learn an example. So suppose that we got a, a rod whose length is 100, 100 inches long and we want to find the best way to cut it in order to uh, maximize our, our income. So we show that, okay, so uh, this is the number of instructions, 10 to the power of 30. You will need to uh, perform around 10 to the power of 30 instructions. and. Uh, so to, to finish this amount of instructions, even though you are given the most powerful computer in this world, it will take you around um, uh, 30, 30 billion years. And uh, so, so, so that's, that's how we, that's why we named the computationally, computationally infeasible. So it is feasible, but it's not feasible in any short time, in, any, in anyone's lifetime. So probably by, uh, in, in, in third, in, Within thirty million years, uh, sorry, within thirty billion years. Um, so I'm not sure if if the Earth is still going to exist. It's, it's, if you if you know about the solar system, we are experiencing a a, a big bang. So uh, it's it's basically that the the solar uh, the solar space is just keep uh, is just keep keep increasing, keep 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 expanding. So and. And by, uh, in, in 30 million years, uh, it's, it's, I, I, re I really doubt if the Earth still exists. Uh, so, but that doesn't matter for us. And um, so, so last time we also talked about this mathematical equation. So we said that here we got the, the equation that is uh, formulated by some mathematicians. And here we have Rn as the revenue, the highest revenue uh, for a rod of length n, and pi is the the price for a rod of length i. So in so this is equation. So here, uh, what we can say from r n and uh, equals to pi plus r n minus i is this. Okay, so so if we're giving a rod of length n now, instead of worrying about all the possible cuts, we just first let's worry about the first cut or the leftmost cut. Suppose here we make the left most card at the at place over here. It means that we are not allowed to further cut the left part, but instead we can cut the right part as uh, so in, 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 in any way that we want. So because the left part has to be sold in a hole, and uh, so so then the, the revenue that we can make from it is just pi. So we are just selling a small route of length i. And for the right part, which is where we are allowed for the cut it, the highest revenue for us to get a to 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 get for a rod of length n minus i is basically r n minus i. So if we cut, if we make the leftmost cut at the add place, then the high the, the highest possible revenue that we can make is just the pi plus r n minus i. So 
So then what we do is that we want, we basically want to try all the possible ways of the first card. So we can, so the first card can start as early as here. So, and then as late as here. So there are a lot of different positions for us to, to make the first card. And here we just, uh, enumerate all the possible places of the of the leftmost card and say okay whichever gives us the highest revenue and then is it is going to be the highest revenue for uh, for for uh, a route of the n so this is how we come up with uh, so so how we reach this this mathematical formula so and uh, last time we we stop we stop right over here so, so uh, do you still remember this equation and the rod cut problem? Yeah, so remember. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, uh, just just remind you, the rod cut problem is that giving a price uh, array like this. Uh, so, and then giving a rod of length n, we basically want to find the best way to cut the rod so that if we sell each of them, each each piece after the cut. Then the total amount of money that we're going to receive is going to be maximized. So uh, this is the objective or definition of the problem. And then, uh, so last time we stopped at here, and this mathematical equation is really beautiful because because it tells us the it 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 it, 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 it lets us know the direction or the how to solve the problem with a very short uh, mathematical formula. And even though it's really simple, uh, it's still if we if we follow if we strictly follow this mathematical formula, it looks simple. But if we if we follow this uh, mathematical formula to solve the problem, then um, we still end up with with uh, uh, exponential complexity. So I'm I'm going to explain to you uh, this to you now. So um, so here we have R n equal to the max of i uh, so i larger than one larger than equal to one less than equal to n and pi plus r n minus i so this is the mathematical formula that we're getting so um let's suppose that we have n equal to four right let's suppose that we have n equal to four so to calculate r4 we will need to we will need to say calculate this. Okay, we will need to calculate here. So first, let's let's say we have i equal to one. When i equal to one, what? So what is r n minus i? What is n minus i basically? Three. N minus I is going to be three. So we need to calculate the the highest revenue for rod of length three. Okay. And then when next time when we increase i by one, so i becomes two, so r n minus i becomes r two. And next time when uh, when i be, uh, when i is is three, then we so this part becomes r one. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So then to calculate r to calculate r three to calculate r three, we will need to. Uh, say so, so here to calculate R3, basically we just replace N with three. Then to calculate R3, we will need to, so here you can see that to calculate R4, we will need R3, R2, and R1. And then to calculate R3, we will need R2 and R1. And then to calculate R2, we will need, we will need to calculate R1. So it's like before you're solving a problem of then uh, uh, the before you 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 get the solution for a route of length four, we need to calculate the solution of the the uh, the, the optimal solution for a route of length three and length two and length one. And to calculate the, the optimal solution for a route of length three, we need to we need to know the the optimal solution to a route of length two and one. Okay, and then to calculate to calculate this R two, we will need need R one. So Let's say in total, how, how many calculations do we need? Eight. Yes. Still eight. Still going to call the uh, function eight times. And if you recall previously, okay, here, um, so there are in total eight ways to cut a route of length four. So basically, if we want to enumerate all the possible ways, we need to, uh, so we need to perform eight uh calculations or eight uh, so so yes we, we need to perform the instructions 
uh, eight times. Over here, it's, it's the same. So if we, if we follow this mathematical formula, and then we still end up with eight times. So which means that this solution, if, if we strictly follow this solution, we still end up with O two to the power, uh, we still end up with um, exponential complexity. And so, 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 so which means that, yes, this, this formula looks cool, but it does not help to us to uh, help us to, to, to reduce the workload. It's just same school. Um, so, so, and here, guess what? So, so where does, can we, can we have a better solution than, than calculating the, uh, doing eight calculations? Or is there any part that you can, you want to improve? Maybe you could like store the value of like whatever you calculated already. Yes, awesome. So here we can see that we definitely we see that. Let's say how many times do we calculate the solution for R one? How many times do we need to calculate R one? So we 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 repeatedly calculate the solution for the same problem four times, correct? So we calculate R1 four times. How many times do we calculate the solution? Uh, do we calculate R2? Two times. Yes, two times. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is this? And so, so what gives us so so much workload is that we, if we strictly follow this mathematical formula, we end up with calculating for solving the same problem multiple times, and which leads to a big waste of time. And so uh, think about it in this way, okay? So suppose here, uh, if, I, if I give you, after we, we finish chapter one, okay, I give you a question, question one, okay? So I, I, uh, I give you a programming uh, uh, problem, say question, problem one, let's say problem one, after we finish chapter one. And then after chapter two, okay, I give you a problem which is P1 and P2. P1 here is the same for chapter one. So basically I want to check your understanding of both chapter one and chapter two. So then that's why I, I, I still uh, give, uh, copy and paste the, the, the previous question for chapter one over here. Okay, and then after chapter two, three, okay, I ask you, I give you a, a homework which includes P1, Problem one, problem two, and problem three. And here, problem two, one, and problem four are, are the same as over here, okay? And then after chapter four, I give you four questions, four problems, and the first three are the same as the, those in your, home, in your homework three, okay? So, so if I am a professor like this, uh, so, so how are you going to solve your, how are you going to work on your homework? You really work on the chapter that you're on, just that, like the end part, the last part. Yes, yes. So basically, if you if you are, so if you strictly follow my um, follow my instructions, after chapter one, you will solve uh, problem uh, P one, problem P one, and then uh, after chapter two, you will solve problem P one P two, and then after chapter three, you you're you're going to solve problem problem P one P two and P three. So basically, you end up with solving the same problem P1 four times, correct? Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a waste time of you. Why not spend those time that uh, the, uh, the, uh, th those time with your family or with your computer games, right? So then, what you want, what you can do is that after the first time when you solve P1, you store the solution on your computer. Let's say it is S1, you store it on your computer. So next time. When you say when you say that when you say the same question in your in, in another homework, you just copy and paste it over here. You just copy and paste your solution over here, and so that you you only end up with working on P one once, correct? Yeah. Okay. So next time when you say a new problem P two, you you get the solution of it. You, you you work on it. You spend your time say maybe a couple of hours on it, and then. 
in the future, if you say the same question again, just copy and paste. Same for P3. So, okay. So in that, so it's like every time when you solve a new problem, or, 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 or so when you, when you work on a new problem, you store the solution somewhere in your hard drive. And then next time when, when you uh, want to work on, when, when, uh, so when you say, say this question again, you say uh, you, you uh, just copy and paste the solution over there. Got it? Yep. Oh, okay. wait a minute. Okay, I'm going to understand this better right now. Share something. Excuse me? Are you asking a question? I think he didn't have his mic muted by accident. Okay. Okay, sure. So, so, and this is the philosophy. This is the philosophy of philosophy of dynamic programming. So instead of repeatedly, repeatedly solve, solving the same problem multiple times, we only, we, we, by storing the solution of, uh, every time when we work on a new problem, we store the solution. And uh, so, so, so next time when we need, when we need to work on the same problem again, we don't work on it actually. We just, we just, just copy and paste the, the, the solution from our hard drive or from our memory. So that is the philosophy of dynamic programming with the help of dynamic programming. So over here, if we apply dynamic programming, what we do is that, so for R1, we, the first time we, we are asked to solve R1, we just store the solution. Uh, so we, so then we, uh, and next in the future, if we, if we work, if we are asked to, to solve it again, we, we just uh, say, 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 copy and paste it. So we, we end up with solve, solving R1 once, R2 and R2 once, and R3 once and R4 once. So that is how we reduce the complexity. So, and, and now you can see that instead of what, what uh, so calling the same function to calculate the, the revenue eight times, now we, we end up with four times. So we, here we only call the same function. We only work on the problem four times. But the, so so, and this is how we reduce the complexity by using dynamic programming. Make sense? Any question? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay. So uh, then um, so uh, next, I want to briefly talk about. Uh, so how horrible is the two to the power of n or exponential complex? So here we, in computer science, when we talk about expo exponential complexity, we always use two as the, at the base, okay? But in, actually in, in real life, any value can be the base. So we can have a base, let's say, um, uh, we, we used, for example, uh, P. P to the power p to the power of n. Okay, so p is like the base. So every time we got a value changed by uh, p, uh, so 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 here. So the initially we have one, then we have p and p square, and p uh, cubic, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, until we have p n, where n is the 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 total number. Uh, so so is the 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 length of the sequence. Okay, so. Um, and actually, uh, as long as we have, so this is also exponential because uh, so we, we, we got a power over here. And actually any, giving, giving any basis, giving any basis P, uh, giving any base P, as long as no matter how big or how small P is, as long as we have N relatively large, say when N reaches 50 or 20 or 100, this value is going to be the final value over here is going to be extremely large or small. So we were going to see a definitely big change over the value. Just giving giving it uh, so so some uh, just giving it uh, sufficient time. So let's say a hundred years or when the, the sequence is, is relatively long. And uh, so uh, let me give you an example. Okay, suppose today that you are very lucky and uh, you got some money. Uh, you, you, uh, someone just give you a, uh, a, a big chunk of, of money. Say, so suppose today you receive $20,000. Okay, so maybe 
maybe this is uh, another big stimulus check and or maybe it's uh, it is a gift from your, your parents or your grandparents and so how do you want to spend that twenty thousand dollars save it save it okay so here we 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 have is uh something called uh we have a solution saying you we want to save it you basically you, you want to save it in cash or saving save it save it in a savings account like i meant like save invest it like stuff by gamestop by gamestop okay okay so so here uh let's let, let me just uh give you a couple of examples okay so suppose let's follow the previous way okay so suppose someone decide to save it and if you save it, so the best savings rate in the United States is around one percent. So it means that here, if you save, if you if you go for savings, and then P is going to be one point one point zero one. So it means that the first year you got twenty thousand dollars, and next year you you will get the, uh, you will get P times this money. So you will get uh, twenty thousand plus. Uh, two hundred dollars because you earn two hundred dollars in uh, in uh, interest and then so 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 and this this is going to 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 keep on okay so you keep on learn, uh, earning the the interest rate your one percent interest rate every year okay so and uh, and so the the other thing I just hear about is like to invest on stocks so do you know how how much does stocks usually give you nine percent. Ten percent less than that. So if you no, invest, isn't, isn't it like fifteen percent annual return? I thought. No, no, we, that's no, with nine percent. Yes, that, that's with much. So over the past one hundred and thirty years, if you invest on, on let's say an index fund, S P five hundred, on average, just on average, it gives you around eight percent annual return. Eight percent. Okay. So that's just over a long term on average. But so if you're lucky enough, in one year you probably can get 20% like the last year. But uh, or if you are very unfortunate, let's say in 2008, you probably are going to lose 40%. But in the long term, you earn around uh, 80%. Uh, so 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 here uh, uh, is the so P, so here we got the P as here we got a P as 1.08. Okay, so which so here with one year, so your savings, if you do if you deposit your money in a savings account, you will get twenty thousand and two hundred. And if you if you invest on stocks, then you will get twenty one thousand plus six hundred dollars. Okay, so and so on and so forth. I'm not going to write on the, the the future values. So any other suggestion on how to spend that gift? The real estate. Real estate, okay. It's uh, if you it, it, uh, invest on real estate, it, it's it's going to be around five percent. Uh, but this varies a lot, depends on where to to invest. It. But general, in general, in the United States, states it is this. So, okay. So in one year, your twenty thousand is going to become twenty one thousand. Any other suggestion? Uh, how to spend it? Buy a car and resell it for more. Okay. Let's say. Let's say, let's make make it simple. Okay, you just buy a car and you don't you don't sell it. Uh, you just you just use it because you you want a new car, you want a better car, and you want you want to drive it. So so to, to improve your driving experience. Uh, so do you know what is the? So definitely cars only depreciate, right? So uh, do you know how fast does the cars depreciate in, in its value? Like three percent a year? No, faster than the negative fifteen percent. So if you spend, if you spend, so so let's say then here we have P as zero zero point eight eighty five. So let it means that if you buy a twenty thousand car today, next year it will be seventeen thousand, and then one year after that it will be seventeen thousand seventeen thousand plus uh, times this number. So. So every year you lose, basically every year you lose 15% of its residual value. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, okay. So here, let's say, okay, so these are just, just 
the choices that different people make at the, for or certain for the same amount of money. And here you can say that in one year, the the wealth that they are holding are different. And this the, uh, that uh, this p different people hold hold are, are relatively different. So here we say someone got uh, so as many as twenty one thousand and uh, sorry twenty one thousand six hundred and. Uh, someone got uh, eight, uh, sorry, seventeen thousand. But the difference is not that much, correct? Just like twenty percent or twenty-five percent difference at most. But the the thing is that if you give it sufficient time, when 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 the number of years, let's say we do not like look at one year return. Let's let's just like look at ten in ten years or even in fifty years. How much value are they going to have? Or how much wealth are, are these people going to have? Okay, so let's just let me just stop presenting from my um, uh, Mac and then start presenting from my laptop. Okay, so uh, can I say it? Yep. Okay, so here I'm going to start. So I'm going to start a Python notebook, and uh, here you can see that I created this uh, notebook la uh, last week for the purpose of, of my research. And uh, just go to, go, to, go to the very bottom. Okay, here. Uh, okay, so so um, here is something that I want to show you. Okay, so suppose here um, uh, you got uh, say initial. You got in, initially you got twenty thousand dollars, and then different people invest on different things. Someone got invest on stocks, then the, the so every year you got so every year you got so the, the investment rate is going to be eight percent, and so this is what you get for savings account. You got one percent, then this is the car risk. Every year you you lose fifteen percent, and then let's add another thing, which is the real estate. Or you wait. So let's say it is five percent, and let's just give it some time. Let's say, for example, fifty years. Like, uh, how how much better are they going to 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 hold? Okay. So let me add something called real values. Basically, here I'm just calculating the uh, the uh, the value that uh, or the wealth uh, it is that, that different people are going to uh, hold hold over uh, some so over the course of fifty years based on different solution real estate. Okay, so here you can say that in year zero, uh, so let's say, no, in, in one year, so the, the, the stock is going to keep, uh, if, you, if you invest on stocks, you end up with this amount, this is what you get from, from real estate, this is what you get from uh, savings account, this is what you get from investing on a car, and then um, this is what you get, your, your value over the term of 50 years. And then let's wait. So no, let's let's plot one more thing, which is the uh, the real estate. Let's keep, let me give the color orange. Okay. Okay. So this is the value that this this figure basically shows uh, your wealth. Um, uh, based on your choice, uh, so all of them have the same. They, they have the same starting point, twenty thousand dollars, and over the x axis is basically the years. Okay, so in fifty years, if you if you invest on stocks, then finally you will have very close to one million dollars. Okay, and if you invest on real estate, this is uh, what you got. Uh, less a little bit less than. Uh, uh, say uh, a quarter million dollars, and this is what we got from uh, from savings account thirty around a little bit over thirty thousand dollars. 
And this is what you got from investing on cars, basically very close to zero. Okay, so um, this is here. I just uh, so so uh, and uh, and to show you, okay, how shocking it is. I'm just going to uh, ignore the real estate and and uh, and the uh, savings account just by showing how fast does does your value depreciate over uh, the the number of years if you invest on on uh, if you make a bad investment on car. Okay, basically in 20 years. In 20 years, you will be, you will have around nothing from from. Uh, so if you want to go for enjoyment by having by buying a good car, then in 20 years, your twenty thousand dollars is is basically going to disappear. Okay, and so uh, this is what I want to show to you. Okay, so here basically you can see that the rate, the the base of uh, in the in the exponential thing. Is uh, the difference in them is relatively small. So, so here we got a 1.0. Uh, one, so this is like say um, 1.08. This is 1.05, and this is 1.01 .01 and 0 0.85. The difference of between them are relatively small, but if we give it a long, sufficiently long time, let's say only 50 years, you will be able to say that okay, this their value changes a lot. There, there is a huge difference between the values. So, um, so here is this is what I want to show to you. Okay, basically, um, um, the exponential complexity is or uh, exponential thing is is so the tiny difference in the base of an exponential thing is 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 going to make a huge difference over over the a long term. Okay, so if you give it sufficient time, it will make a very big difference. So this is. Also, something that I want to um, let you know, okay? What is capital? What what is capitalism? If the capitalism is that initially, if you if you hold your initial capital, as long as you have initial capital, it's real, it's really laggy. Okay, let me see. How about now? Can you hear me? It's fine. Okay. So, uh, did you see the my previous plot? Which one was that? The one where you showed us? Yes. Uh, the uh, the the plot. So the value over the term of fifty years. Yep. Okay. Sure. That's what I want to show you. Okay. So here. What is capitalism? Okay, capitalism is that if you hold an initial capital and if you invest it in a good way, and if you, I mean, if you just discipline yourself from the from the immediate enjoyment, from the immediate joy, instead you 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 delay your enjoyment and invest it in a good way, over the term of over the term of let's say twenty or fifty years, you will be able to get a huge enjoyment compared with the initial small enjoyment. So if with twenty thousand dollars initial, if you want to buy a car today, so you probably can only afford a a Corolla or something like that, Corolla or or uh, Civic, that kind of car or Focus or Focus, this kind of car, right? But if you invest it in, in, in on stocks of, over the term of fifty years, your twenty thousand dollars is going to be very close to one million dollar, and with that one million dollar, you will be able to basically afford almost any car. So uh, this is capitalism and uh, be smart with your money when you are young. Uh, so now if you got $20,000 and if you invest in your on stock, just invest it on SP500. By the, by you, by the time when you reach reaches, uh, 70, you will get just about $1 million over there. That is going to be your retirement fund. So that during that, at that, when you are relatively old, you can, you can easily retire with with dignity. You don't have to work until 85, 90. Uh, so, and this is what I want to uh, explain to you, okay? Uh, so um, be smart with the money. And uh, um, so, so and, and uh, the reason is that, uh, uh, so I collaborate with a gaming company, mobile, mobile game, gaming company. And 
as you know that last Wednesday, uh, people start to receive their stimulus check, right? Yes. Yeah. How did you how did you how 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 did you do with your what 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 did you do with your stimulus check? I mean, I'm probably gonna invest it. I just got mine today. Yes. Yes. Invest it. Okay. Invest it. Don't spend spend on something like this that whose value is only going to de depreciate. But, and what I saw is that with uh, because because of the collaboration with that gaming company, we 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 see a big jump in their revenue since since last. Um, uh, Wednesday. So, so they basically did nothing, and uh, but their revenue just jumped forty percent, starting from from last Wednesday. And do, so, probably you know where does that money come from, right? So, some people just use that their stimulus check and buy buy those virtual things from the games. Do you know how much is what is the if we invest on a game, uh, not a game, not a game stop, but but a, a, a game. Okay, how much? What is the what is the investment return? Five. Negative one hundred percent because on average, a mobile game can can only survive less than three years. So in three years, you lose everything. On average, same same similarly for for um, computer games. Okay, so don't do that. Uh, so um, so I mean. After seeing after after seeing that the their revenue just jumped by uh fifty percent around forty percent I was I was like yes these people got can can if 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 people invest their their stimulus check over games or over like a luxury bag or luxury shoes fashion shoes they 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 really cannot complain that they're poor right so this is the the difference in their choice and they make such a poor investments okay so um don't be someone like that and also uh here we can say that the stocks can give you a very re relatively high return eight percent right you know actually there is one thing that can give you a much better investment mental return than stocks don't know what's that guess what is that like options or something like that or you mean like no no that's too risky. Of stocks that's too risky. If you do options, uh, so if, let's say if you do, uh, let's say five times options, uh, then so five five time options, then if the stock market just just loses, let's say twenty percent, then you would be totally bankrupt. That's too risky. Man, you're just talking about like mutual funds or like ETFs. No, no e ETFs, and mutual funds, they're pretty much like stocks. Uh, so if if the total stocks just just stock market just crashed. Almost every ETF or mutual fund is going to 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 lose its value too. It's Bond? just like the risk, and it's just a a, a a the difference between the risk and the return. So, so do you like know, currency trading? No, bitcoins are prepared? also a bubble. It's it's definitely a bubble. I'm I'm I probably can talk uh, talk a little bit about it later in the semester. Don't invest on on, on bitcoins. It's it's too risky for you at your age. You can start a business. No, invest on yourself by going for education. Okay, so on average, this is that this this research has been completed uh, by someone from Harvard, Stanford. So there is a big team, and uh, they they finished the study. Let's say around five five years ago. What they found is that if you investment on yourself by going by by spending one more year. In education, okay, it could be a college, it could be a high school, it could be a graduate school. Don't know what is the average return. What is the average return? Yes, it's not eight percent. Fifty. Twenty-five. Twenty percent. Fifteen. It's twenty percent. Okay, invest on yourself. So, so um. So um, by learning more things, and because if you learn more things, you are going to increase your value because because you are going to be more productive and more efficient in your job, and so that you can produce more value. And so in return, you got a better uh, comp compensation, better salary. So that is the the path 
to wealth as well as happiness in your life. Because if you are, have negative balance in your account, how can you be happy? So, um, uh, so this is, and, and also uh, people, uh, the study show also, research also shows that for, for any country, if, if, the, if the government extends the, gives one more year of free education to, to, its, to its citizens, then on average, the GDP of that country also increases by 20%. So, so this, uh, on, on, on another hand, this proves that the 20%, uh, so return of education. If you basically, if you invest on stocks, it's like you, 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 you give your money to someone who sits in California or who's, who's, who, who's like Elon Musk, the Tesla thing, or who, who sits in the Wall Street. You don't know them. What you can do is like cross your finger and say okay pray for that okay guys work hard for my for my investments i want to say at least eight percent or ten percent of the return but if you invest on your on yourself you have the control of, of your investment so um um i mean uh this is something that i really want to share with you because i grew up from a a lower class family in a third country, in, in, in a third world country. So, so my my parents, the 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 combined salary of my parents are never never um, more than ten thousand dollars a year. So this is um, what what they make. So, but just through education, uh, I'm in my this stage of my life. So just. I'm not talking about wealth. I'm just talking about the the income. Now, currently, I'm I'm in my early thirties. My income is already in the top percent of the best, of the richest uh, top one percent in the in the richest country of the world. But I don't spend my money uh, on any luxury thing like cars or luxury bags. Uh, so so I don't have a luxury car. Even though a lot of my friends are saying, "Okay, you deserve one. Buy just buy one." No, I don't. Um, so, so what I do is that I'm not sure if you know I have a daughter. No, we didn't know. Okay, I, oh. I, have, a two year, I have a two year old. So, um, what I do is that, uh, so she's she's only two year old, but I have around twenty thousand dollars in her five twenty nine. So that is going to be her college fund, and uh, I, I I I'm going to keep. Um, uh, maximizing my, my contribution for that to, to her uh, college fund so that when she is like your age, like 20s, uh, she probably can have a little bit over half a million in her uh, 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 education account. So she, so then she can just go for this, uh, uh, invest on herself with that money. She doesn't have to carry the student loan. I, hope that, I, I know that some of you carry a big student loan. That's pretty bad. That's pretty sad. I'm, I feel bad for you because basically, at the time when you leave your leave college, you you have negative balance. And um, uh, but say say um, if you don't like it, uh, mostly likely your kids are not going to like it in the future. So be smart and. Uh, and uh, say, 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 uh, so delay your enjoyment, uh, invest on something, make yourself and your kids. So get, get prepared for their education. That's my advice. So, um, and uh, yes, because uh, I remember like, like two years ago, three years ago, uh, when I just started my job at Montclair, one student came to my class, uh, came to my office, asking me for, to, to sign some letter for her because she needs a student loan. And the thing is that she, uh, her, her parents make more money, a little bit more money than the threshold for her to get uh, financial aid. So she, but sadly their parents don't have any savings for her college. So she, she has to get the student loan from a private bank or something like that. And then she needs to extend, what, she needs to stay in Montclair for one semester. So the bank needs one signature to testify that. I gave her the signature. I can definitely see her sadness or see her see, tell that she's, she feels very helpless or, 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 or sad um, because I don't know how much student loan does she, she carry, probably around 100,000 or at least $50,000. And it's going to be a big financial burden for her. So um, uh, uh, this is, 
how come that? I mean, so so now, what what I want to say is that okay, maybe this is too far, but um, just just one suggestion. Okay, so uh, invest on yourself and and give your kids an opportunity to to let them invest on themselves too. Um, so that's my that's my suggestion. And then uh, let's come back to the uh, to the uh, dynamic programming problem. So this is the um, sorry, uh, this is the pseudocode for that. Okay, so um, so um, uh, so here we got the, uh, the 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 dynamic solution, dynamic programming solution of the route card problem. So here is the pseudocode we got. Uh, the, the function takes two input parameters, p and n. So p is basically the uh, the price array. So so basically p i stands for the the highest uh, so sorry the, the price for rod of length n length i. Oh, you're welcome. I mean. Yes, uh, I'll just say, uh, say two messages from the chat area. You're welcome. So I wish that I could realize it when I was like your age. Uh, so so um, uh, even though I seldom, I, I, I still I live in a very, very conservative way. I don't buy luxury thing. Um, most, almost all of my clothes are below $50. I never have a sneaker, uh, which is more expensive than than fifty dollars. Yes. So so, uh, but still, I, I I wish that I could have this financial knowledge when I was in my twenties because it means that I could invest invest early. The longer, as you can see from that figure, the longer you invest, if you invest for more, for ten more years, then your so probably your 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 income or your wealth is going to double. So I lose those ten years. Uh, hope that you can you don't lose that. So, um, okay, so PI, it basically P is the price matrix, the uh, price array, and N is the, uh, the length of, the, of, of a route that you're, you're, you just get. So the objective is to uh, calculate RN, which is the maximum revenue for a route of length N. So what we do is that first we create a, a new array R. Uh, so, so, um, so whose length is basically N plus one. And then, um, and then we have R n equal to zero. So why do we have R R n as zero? What does R zero equal to zero mean? What does this mean? Why do we have this? That's your revenue, like the money you're gonna pay. So yes. So basically, R N st R I stands for the highest revenue for rod of length n, right? Highest revenue, revenue for i length rod. Okay. If you if you have a if you have a rod whose length is zero inch, how much how much money can you make from that at most? Zero. Yes. Basically, you you. You got zero dollars from selling nothing, <laughs> so that's why we have our zero equal to zero. And then for J starting from one to n, so this is uh, where the beauty starts from. Okay, so uh, so here, let let me just copy and paste the uh, the previous price matrix over here. So we have this. Um, so. Uh, I'm just going to make things a little bit easier. So we, we, let's focus on the first of four, okay? One, five, eight, nine. So we have P over here as, we have the input P over here as, I'm going to P, the, so we have the P as this, okay? P1 is one, P2 is five, P3 is, Eight and P four is nine. Okay, P four is nine. So this is the price matrix. Okay, so for let's, let's suppose we have n equal to four. So basically, we want to calculate the highest revenue for rod of length four. Then we create a matrix. We create an array R whose length is five, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we so initially we have R zero equal to zero. 
and then for j starting from one to n so so in each iteration we basically were going to calculate rj so initially we have q as negative infinity and then for i starting from one to j so here we have j equal to one and also i equal to one initially so q equal to the max between the self and pi plus r j minus i what is i Here we have i as one, so this is p one plus r one minus one. So this is going to be so p one is basically one, and r zero is zero. Okay, so we are calculating one plus zero one. So so here what it suggests is what it suggests is that the highest revenue that we can get for a rod of length one is just a, is just q, which is which is one dollar. Okay, so then we put one over here. So, so in initial one, we basically calculate we basically calculate the, the highest revenue of our uh, for a rod of length j, and we we slowly we slowly increase in j from one to n. So next time we are we will calculate r two. So in the next uh, uh, iteration of the for loop of the auto for loop, we're going to increase j by one. So, so j becomes two. Then we're going to calculate. R2, we're going to fill in a value here, and next time we're going to fill value here, and next time we're going to fill value over here. So after we calculate uh, Rn, we just return it. So this is the, 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 the philosophy of, uh, this is how this algorithm works. Basically, after calculating Rj, we store it in the array. So next time when we need it, we just copy and paste it from, from over here, from here. Is that clear? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I mean, uh, so to, for you to implement this algorithm, it's not it's not going to be complicated at all because we basically only have four loops and um, nothing nothing uh, more fancy than that. But you have to understand it's it's relatively hard for us to understand the, the logic behind that because the beauty is that we are after we finish we after we calculate R J or calculate the highest revenue for rod of length J. We just store it in the array. So in the future, if we need it, we just go to the array and get it. Okay. So then, um, any question? Uh, do you have any confusion with regard to this algorithm? Okay. Um, if no. Um, then I'm going to talk about briefly talk about the complexity of the algorithm. So previously we said that when we're calculating when 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 we are inferring the complexity of certain algorithm, we need to pay attention to two parts. What are the two parts? Wait, first, first actually I do. I'm sorry, I do have a question. Um, sure. For on line four. Um, mm -hmm. So you initialize to the negative infinity, what for? What okay, the thing is that before you calculate the highest revenue for a rod of any length, before you do, you do that calculation, you don't know how much money you can make from it, right? Mm -hmm. So initially, you, 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 this is like your bottom line. So initially, before calculation, you say, okay, probably I'm not going to make anything from it. So so then in this, in the circle, you just give it a negative, z, negative infinity value. But what you can do is that you just give zero. Okay, so you both get it up. Right, yes, so. both are fine. Okay. So it's like, this is like the, this means that before you do any calculation, you have no clue about the, 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 the revenue that you are going to be able to make. Okay, so we can set it to just zero. One. Yes, you okay. can just set it to zero. All right, thank you. No problem. And then let's talk about the complexity, okay? So previously we said that if we want to infer the complexity of an algorithm, we need to pay attention to two parts. The first part is loops, and the second part is function call. So does, if this function call different function, we need to take the complexity of another function into, into consideration. But here with this, with this pseudocode, we don't have any other function call. So, so then we need to only need to pay attention to loops. So how many loops do we have? Two. Two. Two, okay. So how many iterations are there in the first loop?
uh, depends on n. The, yes, it's yeah, n. It's basically n, n loops. N terms, yeah. uh, sorry, n iterations, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many iterations are there in the second for loop? J, J, right? Okay, so what is the, so so then because J is a variable, so we want to avoid J, but what is the maximum value of J? N times, isn't it? Sure. Yes, the maximum value of J is just yeah. N. So J is less than N. Okay, because this two for loops, this, this for loops are nested. So, we, so when we calculated the number, total number of iterations, we need to multiply them. So then, here we got it. So it is n square. Correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. So the time complexity of this algorithm is n square. Time com complexity means like the time performance. Uh, so, okay. And for the first time, we learned something called space complexity. Space complexity is something like this. Okay. If you run a program, so if the program ask, is going to allocate some space in your, in your physical memory, in the RAM of your computer, we also need to take that into consideration. And over here, this algorithm, it creates a new array which, to store the solutions for, for, uh, for uh, the rod of different lenses. So, and so we basically we need to create a new array in your, in your memory. So we also need to take that into consideration. And the length of the array is n plus one. So basically, in your memory space, we're going the, so we're so this this program is going to uh, ask for O n space complexity in your memory. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so space space uh, space complexity give you a sense on okay how much memory does your program uh, demand? Okay, so so and uh, so and okay, so uh, this is the what I want to talk about about the talk about the 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 rod cut problem, and here we call this problem rod uh, bottom up. We call this solution bottom up. The reason is because we are calculating first we we calculate R one and then we calculate R two. Then calculate R three and R four. So sorry, no, I should write it in a different way. Bottom up. And then there could be a different solution named, uh, say, top down. So we start from R R four and then look at uh, ask for the solution of R three and then look at the solution of R two and then R one. So uh, then. The serial code for the uh, for the top down solution is over here. It's actually pretty simple. So so uh, so uh, it, it has two functions. Uh, it has two functions. Uh, so this is the main function. First, it creates a new array and it assigns negative infinity to all cells of the array. R. So like previously, what I said before, you do the calculation. You just assume that for a, for a lot of any length, you can only make negative infinity. Uh, uh, amount of money, okay, and then it will call the auxiliary function to calculate the 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 uh, say say the revenue for a rod of length n, and this is the the call. If r n is larger than zero, larger than or equal to zero, it means that you you have already calculated the solution of that, so just return it. Otherwise, you just calculate it, and fill in the calculated value in that space. Work on it and fill in the uh, fill in the value, store the value in, in the array R. So this function is very similar to the bottom up one. So um, so if you uh, so when you are doing your homework homework six, uh, I would suggest you to go to implement the bottom up one first and then come back to the uh, top down one. So it's going to save you a lot of time. Okay. Any question? No. Okay. And um, lastly, uh, the, in the book, there are two auxiliary algorithms. So these two algorithms does this, okay? These two functions does this. Instead of just calculating the, the highest revenue for a rod of length n, it also tell, this function basically tells, tells you where do, do you need to make the cut in order to make the 
the highest revenue. So SI stores the cut. Okay, where do we need to make the cut? So, but I, I, I don't require you to implement this, these two functions. Um, uh, they're, they're not difficult at all, uh, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't require you to do so. Uh, but if you want to do that, it's fine. And you will be able to get around 20% extra credit. So it's just, it's just the two lines, two additional lines of code in the bottom up uh, function. So if you want to earn some extra credit, this is the opportunity. Uh, Professor, I was wondering, how do we return R and S? Okay, so that's a very good question. So, so the thing is that uh, with, with Java, a function can only return one value, right? Yeah. So, so here, you don't need to return it. This is because in the in scaling code that I give you, R and S are part of the class. So they are the class member variables. So all the functions inside the class can access them. So you don't, you don't need to return them at all. Okay, so we would just exclude that if we were to write the program out? Yes, you just stop at line nine and that will be fine. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. So any other question for me? Okay, so, and after this class, I, I again, the same as what I uh, uh, said last week uh, in, 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 uh, on Tuesday, I require everybody to read this subchapter, 15.1. And uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be really beneficial to you. Uh, so this is the first time that I require everybody to read the subchapter. Uh, okay, so then, um, that's what I want to discuss for uh, the first part of, of dynamic programming. And uh, so, so <laughs> I think uh, besides the dynamic programming thing, maybe, maybe uh, this one is more, is more <laughs> beneficial to you. Okay, so uh, remember, invest on yourselves. So, uh, th the early you make you doing best on yourself, the better. So, so uh, pre, uh, if you want to, if you are considering to go to graduate school, go for it. You will not regret it. Okay. So um, yes, that's what I want to discuss today. And uh, if no more question, then that's it. And have a very happy weekend. Uh, professor. Can mm -hmm. I just ask you a quick question about the uh, sure. homework that's also due with sure. the binary search tree? Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking at the su successor uh, function, and there was an issue that I was having with the uh, tree, like using the minimum function, mm -hmm. because uh, for some reason, like so, the way it was written, like in the lecture, we would do like minimum, and inside of the parentheses, we would put uh, x dot right, but mm -hmm. uh, like it seems like the minimum doesn't actually uh you, you, you don't actually input anything in the minimum like it just yes uh, you, it returns the tree node but okay and so when i put x dot right dot minimum that also didn't seem to work no it won't work so because the minimum function belongs to a tree it belongs to a binary search tree right right so if you want to Uh, professor, I think your your audio cut out. Professor, <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is on my end. No, I can't hear him either. Oh, okay. Can he hear us? Can Can you hear us? I don't think so. Okay, how about now? 
Yeah, now it's working again. Thanks. Okay. So, um, is okay. So, so what do you, what do you need to do is that first you create a tree, financial tree, whose whose root node is the right child of X, and then we call the minimum function from the from the tree. So you, you would set BST equals to min and then set that equal to the No, t. no, you no, no, no. First, you create a BST, the banner search tree object. Let's say we, we give it a, a name, T. You create a, so here you create a banner search tree, new banner search tree, whose root node is the, the right child of X. And then next, you call the minimum function from the tree that you created. Okay. That makes a little bit more sense. So we would have to create a new BST before the uh, if statement. Yes. In the successor. Gotcha. Gotcha. This is one subtle change that we need to make. Okay, that's okay. And then also there was a, a minimum function you use later. That. Um, no, 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 never mind. Never mind. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Okay, thank you. That's pretty much the question that I had. Okay. No problem. Have a good weekend. Have a good one. You too. Hello, Professor. How are you? Oh, good. How about you? Good, good. Um, so, uh, uh, what's it called? I emailed you like I think like last week or something. Uh huh. And um, you're probably busy. I think I emailed you on a Friday, and that's that's fine. You're probably busy. So basically, with Java, I don't like Java as much as I like Python. Uh huh. So is there any way like I mean I and I'm learning Python like as it goes like I'm learning everything. So um, is there any way like you could give me like if if you if you do have time to so give me like practice or oh, something. Oh, I, like no, I, I remember your email. I forgot okay. to reply you. Okay, so uh, I'm wondering if you can give me some practice projects or something. Yeah, like. I'm using Python. Okay, so I'll, I'll probably, I'll say probably you can start reading a couple of books about Python mm -hmm. before, before really working on a, a project. So I'll send you uh, two books uh, later today. Okay. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for like being honest with us and everything. I actually appreciate that. You're like one of the only professors to do that. So thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good weekend. All right. You too. Bye bye.